What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. We are over here at Copart. It's Copart Walk Around Day, guys. Video number two of three for the week. We're going to jump right into this with Alexis. And it looks like this Alexis has been sitting here for a while. Uh, it's got that beautiful, beautiful pearlescent paint. I love the pearlescent paint. This has been sitting here since March of 19. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, this is a non-runner. This one's a non-runner. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I can't wait to show you guys the inside. But first, let's get right. Uh, this is how you start a video right here. This one is, this one, this one is rough. I like it. I like it. I like them a little rough around the edges. This is an ES330. The body does not look bad. The windows are, are left down. Oh, there's a knife. There's a knife. What? Oh my goodness. Alrighty then. Yeah, look at that. This is a, a Hampton Forge knife. It's so hot the damn thing's about smoking. What is this? Coffee. We got we got coffee. Lots of mildew and stuff from this thing sitting with the windows down for a year now. Definitely front end damage. Uh, front fender, front bumper. That really looks to be about all. I mean, looks can be deceiving. We all know that, right? Okay, where's that hood release? There we go. Let's see what she looks like under here. VVTI V6 3.3 liter, as the badge would clearly designate for you. Uh, coolant, dry as a bone in the overflow. Do we have an actual radiator cap on this car? Uh, that I don't know. Uh, doesn't look like it. So most likely we have undercarriage damage. Yeah, I don't hear any. There's the radiator cap right there, but I can already tell you I don't hear any coolant at all. You don't see any coolant at all. Dry as a bone. Yeah, so most likely we have uh, either core support damage, radiator damage. It is full of oil though. So that's good. I don't, so far, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't start, though. You know what I mean? Like, it's listed as a non-runner. And after sitting this long, I'm pretty sure it probably doesn't run. Uh, ethanol gas. Everybody uses ethanol, even though we have the option. Almost every gas station in Oklahoma uh, gives you the option for ethanol or non-ethanol. And still, because it's a few cents cheaper, everybody chooses ethanol. And when you do that... When you have a car like this, it's been sitting for a year. Uh, a lot of times they're not going to run. A lot of times they're they're not going to run. Bad fuel gummed up everything. Let's see what's going on down here. So we, it took a whack right there. Definitely took some damage. I don't see guys. Uh, it's hard for me to see actually. Maybe you could see better. Like right here, this is where I see the damage, but. I can't I can't get down there and look at it. I can't see it. So I have no idea. This wheel's turned slightly toward the passenger side. This wheel's also turned slightly toward the passenger side. You know what that means? That means we're gonna we're gonna try to fire this. Oh man. You tell me I gotta crawl across this car. Uh, okay. I'm going to Yeah, only this door is open. I'm going to climb in and crawl across this damn car. Ugh. Good Lord. That door was stuck. This is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Let's put a boost back on it. And let's see what she does. So my camera overheated. It is that hot out here today that the camera literally overheated and hasn't recorded anything I've been recording for the past uh, 15 minutes. So I get to go back and kind of make this up to you now. Uh, <laughs> okay, so back to the Lexus. What I didn't get to show you on video because my camera screwed up is I was able to hook the jumper pack up to the car and immediately the alarm went off and scared the living crap out of me. Now, I could go back and try to reenact that and, and you know, play that for you guys. Uh, it, it just wouldn't be realistic though. I'd be faking it and I'm just not big on faking it. So you crawl through and you unlock the door so the next guy doesn't have to. This key is a Toyota key. Now I know Toyota and Lexus are one and the same, but this key does not go into this ignition, guys. Look at this. Like it, 
there's no way this this key does not fit this ignition in any way shape or form now there could be a defect in the ignition it could be a defect in the key i don't know look at all the mud up here okay all down the stack and what really gets me is the mud in here so i don't know if that is all just from the windows being down for the last year i don't know if that is because this car was in a flood so I am going to go back to the house and do a little more research on this and try to figure out exactly what happened. Maybe a Carfax report would be able to tell me a little more about it. But the, the statement of non-running is absolutely accurate because the key will not work in the ignition. So with that, we're going to move on to the next one. So the next one that I already recorded that sucks because it can't be a genuine experience that I get to share with you guys, I already know what's gonna happen, is a 1981 Toyota. Now, I don't know what designation this is. You guys probably know better than me, but it's just an 81 Toyota pickup. It's got a very long bed, a very long bed. Uh, tires actually look pretty decent and they have really good tread. So, the tailgate opens like this. Some of you may remember these. these. These Toyotas were featured in lots of films back in the day. Like, these were the trucks, man. These were the trucks. There you go. The bed works. Or I should say the tailgate. The tailgate works. Probably could use a little lube. I mean, who couldn't use a little lube here and there every now and again? It looks good, guys. It looks good. But I will say uh, the bed has got dings inward and outward all over it. Uh, the worst of it, though, is this is a hail damage truck. So you've got hail damage here. There's a big hail ding right here. A couple big hail dings over here. Uh, another big one right here. Massive hail, guys. Like, just look at the size of the stones. on the. I mean, look at the size of the hail that hit this truck. All right, you can see these were massive, massive hailstones showing 20,154 miles. I'm sure it's 120,000 miles. Still very low miles for one of these. Uh, lots of hail dings all over the roof, but, but in my opinion, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Obviously it needs a windshield. There's a big, a couple big dents up here. This could be popped out. This one would need popped out and you could probably pop a lot of those out and do a skim coat over them, clean them up, clean the rust up. And you could give this truck a, a perfect paint job, a brand new paint job. And it would look almost new again. The only, only downside is what I can't probably show you in the video is just the, 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 the bed man there's so many dings it looks like something just raked up against this thing for years just like brrr, dings all the way down man all over the place it's gonna take a lot of body work a lot of body work that's not from hail you know that's from something rubbing up against it pop the hood for you real quick so you can see what she's working with a little 2.2 liter little four banger carbureted well, I mean, I'm assuming it's carbureted, guys. I, I highly doubt that in 1981, uh, Toyota was using fuel injection on these. We could look by popping everything off, but I'm not going to take anything apart here. It's not my not my car. The bid on this is up to $1,200 right now. The 22R. It does have air conditioning, which, in my opinion, that's kind of a rarity on an older Toyota to have factory air conditioning down there it's got a aftermarket plug wires aftermarket distributor cap uh probably had the plugs done at some point it's got a good looking coil and it's got an aftermarket battery aside from that this thing looks a hundred percent stock and and honestly the interior is beautiful it's not twenty thousand miles i know there's several of you that are going to come out and be like that's got to be twenty thousand it's not it's not but the fact that the door cards or door panels whatever are still in good shape these are made of nothing but like cardboard guys like this is flimsy cardboard with like a plastic or vinyl coating these are cheap the fact those are in good shape is kind of insane this seat right here is in good shape that seat's worn out but look at this dash this almost reminds me of an old Datsun these AC vents right here look at this dash isn't it isn't it beautiful with air conditioning and a stick shift. Guys, guys, oh, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love. I guarantee you, I guarantee you this thing could be put back on the road with minimal work. I mean, you ain't gotta fix all the dings and dents to put it on the road, you know what I mean? Just replace that windshield. Obviously, you gotta do some, some work up here. We got some stuff in the glove box extra shifter parking lights a few other oops 
the maximum trailer weight, 1,102 pounds. <laughs> That's cute. Okay, and here we got our here we got our keys. All right, right there. Good old look at this. This is an original Toyota key, Toyota motor. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Okay, moment of truth though, right? Does it run? Because it's listed as a non-runner. Here we go. You ready? Brakes feel good. Clutch feels good. And a dead battery. Does the radio work? I don't know. Yeah, I don't even know how to work. I don't know how to turn the radio off. Okay. What was that? Lots of buttons. Horn? No. Signals work. Look. <laughs> What is this? Ah, there's stuff in here, guys. Man, I might have to bid on this just because it's got stuff in it. Okay. So we're going to have to put the jumper pack on it. Now let's see what she does. All right. Things are clicking. Things are clanking. Sounds like things are happening under here. Now she should have some juice. Let's try this again. What do you think? Comment right now, guys. Do you think it's going to run? or not all right this is going to be carbureted so i'm gonna pump the gas a few times let's see what she does i'll give it i'll give it a few more pumps nothing well dang but I already knew that because I've already made this video once. <laughs> so I already knew she wasn't going to run. But this is something I had to do for you guys because this is a classic, man. It's a beautiful, beautiful classic truck. Um, I would love to get my hands on it. Personally, if I had to guess, I would guess most likely a fuel problem. Um, this could be fuel injected or throttle body injected. I honestly don't know. I, I expect it to be carbureted. Um, actually, I think I see a carburetor on it down here. You can kind of see it. I don't know if it's got electro an electronic fuel pump. Um, by 1981, I would think it's probably got some sort of an electric pump. And maybe this is like a hybrid. Uh, I know back in the day, in the early 80s, Dodge came out with a caravan with a Mitsubishi engine. And it was carbureted. But it was an electronically controlled carburetor as well. It was a hybrid electronic sort of carburetor deal. Maybe this is that. You know, you really could probably spray some starting fluid down it. And, and it wouldn't surprise me one bit if this thing fired right up. I think it's I think it's gonna be a fuel system issue. What I want you guys to do, I'm really interested in this. I probably won't get it just because uh yeah, just because it's already at twelve hundred dollars with uh, before fees, and it's probably going to go up. But if you had the money, this one, and realistically though, not like you won the lottery and you could just blow money on anything. But if you had the money in the bank, what would you realistically bid on this truck as it sits, just like it is right now? Comment down below and tell me what you would be willing to bid on a truck like this. Next, six hundred and fifty dollar. Buy it now. Nobody has bought it now. I don't know. I'm considering it. 2000. Oh, it's a non-runner. I could swear online it says it runs. I could have swore it said it ran. Well, maybe not. It's a 650. Buy it now. It's an 03 Infinity i35. 206,000 miles on the odometer. I'm seeing rust here that obviously you can't see that from the pictures. Uh, I mean, overall, the body looks all right. Definitely a nice ding over there. It's got It's got dings all over it little ones nothing nothing major just lots of little dings missing a center cap over here the tires are fair they're not good by any stretch of the imagination but i'd say they're fair wow the under underside of the hood is actually i expect it to be very dirty i expected this to be wet covered in oil and grease it actually looks pretty decent somebody took the battery terminal off Huh. Okay, well, put that back on just to see. And since it's a... I swear this is listed as a run and drive, guys. 
it's got oil I just want to like double check a couple things before I fire this one up because I'm telling you online I remember this being a run and drive unless something happened and it no longer is green coolant full good sign clean oil full and what about the transmission yeah the transmission fluid looks pretty good and it looks like it's full as well so i'm going to assume with about even with the battery disconnected this thing is probably dead oh wow Ooh. okay so it looks like a dog chewed up the interior <laughs> someone put seat covers over it to try to make it look a little better the back seats actually look really good. The car really doesn't look that bad. It smells awful. It, 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 oh, we got the black ice air freshener right there. I saw that on a Rich Rebuild's channel yesterday or the day before. And honestly, aside from the seats and the armrest right there, the interior actually looks pretty decent. You could replace the seats, the armrest and stuff. Let's put a jump on it and let's see if it spins over, cranks, runs or whatnot. Beep, beep, beep. And with the booster pack hooked up, if all goes well, this thing will be running in about three seconds. Dash is lit up. It does run. It does. Okay. Oh, what do we got? We got, we've got power steering. It's a good sign. Door handle feels like it works. The important window works. That window works. That's, whoa, why did it roll back down? Uh, no. Okay, that window will not. <laughs> what the hell? It won't, uh... maybe you gotta roll it all the way down and then all the way back up? The window's tripping. Come on now. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now I'm going to have to sit here and screw with that. There we go. Ha! Ah, I tricked it. All the way up and then down just a hair. And that, that locked it into place. Let's, uh, woo, let's check out the air conditioning. I'm going to bet the AC probably does not work. Put it right here. Um, is there an actual AC button or no? Let's turn on automatic. Let's see what it does. The radio? No go on the radio. Oh, something just beeped. Service engine soon light just came on. Air is blowing. Not cold yet. I don't think I heard the compressor either. Ashtray. Let's put it in gear. Oh, clunk and a misfire. Oh, wow. Oh, she's running real bad now. In neutral, I mean, in park, it runs pretty good. And no air conditioning. Let's see what's in the trunk. Oh, it is hot as you know what out here today. Whew. Hey, trunk is empty. Yeah, guys, I thought about hitting the bite now on this. It's like, oh, man, okay, run and drive. You really got to come look at this stuff for real, guys. You got to come out here and look at this stuff. Now, it does have a misfire. It could be something as simple as just replacing the spark plug. Well, I say simple. I don't know how difficult it is on this. I know you've got your intake plenum running up over the valve cover on the rear over here. So I'm going to assume you've probably got to remove a lot of stuff to get to the spark plugs. Probably not the easiest job in the world, but you know, it could be yours. It's the price right. Look, $650, not bad. If all you got to do is a tune up, you guys saw the Avenger. It wasn't that long ago. We purchased an Avenger and it was misfiring. And yeah, you had to take the upper plenum off of the intake manifold to do the tune up on it. But once we got the tune up on it, that thing ran and drove like a brand new car. So I'm not interested in this one right now, but you know, hey, maybe you are. Doesn't look too bad. Next on my list, a little bit of carnage. This one, this one took a pretty bad hit. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this took a really bad hit. Looks all right from this, oh wow. 194,000 miles. What a good escape this was, huh? Yes, sir. 
this thing lived a good life that's a lot of miles that's a lot of miles man whatever hit it though i wonder what the car that hit this came out looking like i mean look at this guys the frame is literally up in the air you know what i mean the frame has been bent up real high whole suspension is destroyed the apron there's nothing left of it i mean there's no apron left it's literally just mangled metal a pillar completely crunched in smashed golly Let's see if we can open a door here and get an idea of what it looks like on the inside wow Good night, man. I gotta hand it to this SUV. I really do. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the Ford Escape, but I will say this, this thing took a massive, major hit. And it looks like anybody and everybody on the inside would have come out A-okay, just fine. That's crazy. All right, guys, moving on to the next. Next on my list, this is one I'm really interested in because I had one just like it before I sent it to Copart. This is a 97 BMW 528i. It's the E39. It's even got the same wheels that mine had. Oh, this is mine. This is mine. This is my Beamer. Are you kidding me? You can, I put my own car on the list, really? <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. I knew I did it. Yeah. Did I fool you? Probably not. Yeah, this is mine. Boy, somebody's been in here playing with the seat. Oh, man. I bet it starts right up, though. I guarantee it starts right I know that it'll start right up because this car always starts. Smoke? Let's see. Did she smoke on startup? No. You son of a beep. You, you, you scandalous man. And here, I'll show you. This, the steering wheel gets stuck. See that? It was stuck for a minute, and then it's all right again. And, and I don't know. It only does it like first start of the day. It, it tries to lock up like that. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah, man. This is crazy, guys. This is crazy because this thing was smoking like a freight train. So I said, nope nope done with it sending it to copart because i i don't want to risk this and and i drove it all the way here and it had no issue drove perfectly fine no smoke whatsoever and here we are like this car has had been sitting here for days had to been sitting here for days and first start boom sucker fires right up doesn't smoke a bit yeah you son of a gun i don't know guys i don't know this car this car may be all right i may have gave up on it too soon i don't know here's a lot number in case anybody's interested in it. i don't know when it's going to come up for auction now i can't tell you that but there's the lot number so if you want to go type it in. in fact in fact you don't have to type in it i'll leave a link guys i'll do that for you i'll leave a link to save you the trouble link in the description box you can just click on it Go check it out for yourself. Put it on your watch list. That way you can watch live and see what it goes for. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please click that thumbs up button. Make sure to let me, let YouTube know that you enjoy this content. If you want to subscribe to the channel, I would truly appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button. Click that bell notification icon. You can follow me, follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Auto Auction Rebuilds. Definitely go check that out because you're going to see stuff there way before you're ever going to see it here. And until next time, stay safe out there, everybody. I'll catch you all very soon in the next one.